Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Cult Movie Tuesdays, and today I'm talking about this little cutie, Little Monsters with Fred Savage. Look at him there, he's so cute. And of course, um, Howie Mandel as the uh, demon goblin thing. Uh, so we'll be talking about this movie. Um, I just watched this recently for the first time, and I enjoyed it pretty good. We're going to be talking about cast, crew, production... Uh, critical response from the critics and where you can watch it and all that cool stuff. So I hope you'll stick around Thank you to everybody who's recently subscribed. I'm uh, as of recording this video in the 420 regions. So uh, Amazing. Thank you so much. I just surpassed 400 Which was a pretty big milestone for me and um, just being a two-year-old channel So I'm hoping this year that I can hit 500 with a bang and uh, I'll have to think of something cool to do for 500 I know I keep saying that every hundred. I'm like, I got to do something special, but uh, I really am working on my, my top 25 or my top 50 movies. Um, but that's taking some time because I have to put a lot of uh, thought and work into it and rewatching and all that stuff. So, But the, when I do hit 500, I, I guarantee there will be something cool, whether it's uh, going over more of my physical media. If you guys have suggestions for for videos you want me to make... Um, I was thinking another cool one might be like my favorite like uh, cover art would be another cool one to do because I do have a lot of stuff that I love uh, as far as that goes so we'll see today is very dreary outside very windy but the spring air is coming and it's lovely today we we're talking about little monsters um, this was a first time watch for me I remember seeing this around when I was a younger person um, but I think I this was 1990, so I would have been 20 when this came out. So I was like, I don't know, I just wasn't watching a lot of kids' movies. Now I'm more comfortable with myself, and I actually enjoy watching some kids' movies. So I was happy to finally get around to watching this, because I was always kind of curious. I mean, I do like these two actors, and so I finally did get around to it. Little Monsters is a fantasy comedy family movie from 1989. Uh, it's directed by Alan, uh, sorry, Richard Allen Greenberg, uh, who was actually mostly a special effects guy. He worked on Predator, Lady Hawk uh, with Matthew Broderick, great film, uh, as well as The Last Action Hero. Another movie, actually, I have not seen. Um, but yeah, he was mostly known as doing uh, special effects and stuff like that. As I mentioned, this film stars Fred Savage, who probably for most people is best known as the kid from Wonder Years. Uh, he went on to be in um, The Princess Bride, which is one of my all-time favorites. Uh, and he was also the mole in Austin Powers' Gold Member. You may remember, uh, if you've seen, seen that movie, you know that Austin Powers pokes. He's a mole, and he actually has a mole on his face. And, you know, Austin Powers is like, molly, molly, molly. Uh, I I don't know why I find that so funny, but I do, I do have a soft spot for Austin Powers, but... Fred Savage, such a sweet kid back then. Um, I don't know what he's up to these days, but um, I loved Wonder Years when I was a teenager. Like, that was one of my favorite, favorite shows. Me and my sister used to watch that every week. Uh, this also serves Daniel Stern, who was in, of course, Home Alone 1 and 2, Leviathan, and City Slickers 1 and 2. Frank Wally, who was actually another actor I really like. Um, I guess he's probably best known for career opportunities. Um, but I know him mostly from a movie called Swimming with Sharks, um, which was like, I don't know if that was like a straight to HBO movie or something, but I saw that movie back in like the early 2000s and I loved that movie. It's so weird. Swimming with Sharks. If you can find that movie, I highly recommend it. Uh, Frank Wally's really good in that. And of course he was Brett in, uh, Pulp Fiction. Go ahead, say what one more time. I dare you. Uh, he was that guy. Uh, and of course, this also stars Harry Mandel, who was the voice of Gizmo in Gremlins 1 and 2. Uh, and he's probably more well-known more recently on, on TV in America's Got Talent. And of course, he was a stand-up comedian. When I was a kid, Howie Mandel was kind of a big deal here in Canada. I think Howie Mandel's Canadian, even. But um, he had a cartoon there with... Um, uh, what's that name? What's that? What's that character's name? My name is Bobby. Bobby. Uh, but he always did this stand-up uh, routine with this character named Bobby. He had this funny voice. My, Hello, my name is Bobby. Uh, when I was a kid, of course, I thought that was hilarious. Um, so I always had sort of a soft spot for Howie Mandel. I don't know about him now, but uh, back in the uh, 70s and 80s, I, I was a big fan. 
Um, the synopsis for this film is Brian, played by Fred Savage, isn't scared of the monster living under the bed. On the contrary, when he gets to know the wild-eyed boogeyman Maurice, played by Howie Mandel, the pair become fast friends. During the night, Maurice takes his young charge into the netherworld of monsters, where they have a great time making mischief in the lives of sleeping children. But Brian's opinion of Maurice and his freewheeling lifestyle changes uh, when he discovers that he himself is turning into a monster. Ooh, little twist there. Um, I love the premise for this movie, of course. A monster living under your bed who's actually hilarious and funny to be around, who takes you into this um, netherworld and you scare other kids and stuff. Sounds pretty cool to me. I probably would have, like, scared my, my bullies because, I don't know, all throughout my childhood I was bullied, so I probably would have gone into that netherworld and come up and scared all my bullies. But um, it's a cool premise for a story as it's different to me. Pre-production for Little Monsters uh, designs of Maurice and the main Little Monsters were created by Alan Monroe, who had previously worked on the film Beetlejuice. This movie actually gets compared to Beetlejuice, apparently, a lot. Principal photography took place from August to October of 1988 in Wilmington, North Carolina. The monster underworld, the toughest portion of photography, was filmed primarily at the abandoned and some say notorious Ideal Cement Plant in Castle Hayne, North Carolina. Sounds like a place for maybe proper people or somebody to go explore. Uh, Ideal Cement Plant. I've not heard of that before. Uh, Daniel Stern, who plays Glenn Stevenson, the father of Fred Savage's Brian Stevenson, was a man responsible for the voiceover narration on The Wonder Years 1988, in which Savage starred. So that's kind of a cool little uh, tie-in there with The Wonder Years. Um, the film was originally set to be distributed by Vestron Pictures, and a trailer was even created by Vestron that was advertised on some of their VHS releases. But due to Vestron's financial difficulties at the time, the film was sold to United Artists, although Vestron did ret retain some of the foreign rights to the film. The budget was between four and five million dollars. I couldn't find an exact number, uh, and the box office was a dismal. $793,775, so uh, did not make its money back, apparently. Uh, this film currently holds a 44% on Rotten Tomatoes. Some of the reviews I read suggested that it was too grown-up for kids, but too goofy for older kids. One review I read said that Mandel's performance was exhausting and obnoxious, um, <laughs> which is very, like, uh, it's quite, quite bitey and scathing, but... Um, could kind of see it. I mean, I did not see this movie when I was younger. I kind of avoided it. You can see how I mend all there. He is definitely obnoxious in this movie, but I think that's what the character is supposed to be. Um, so yeah, it, it didn't get great reviews from critics, and uh, allegedly it's still not getting great reviews from uh, movie watchers and critics to, the, to this day, but... Um, 44% to me seems a little low. I think maybe like 64 or 74% maybe. Uh, I've definitely seen way more, way more terrible kids movies than this one, if that's what you want to say. I mean, this was the complaint from a lot of critics is that it was like too grown up for little kids or like too scary. Um, there were some parts that were a little disturbing, I guess. But I mean, back in those days, and I, I'm not wanting to sound like an old person, but you know, Back in my day, like, the kids' movies were scary, but um, now everything, I think, is so sugar-coated and, 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 you know, we can't have anything that upsets kids. But, uh, you know, even before my generation, you know, Bambi and stuff like that, there was stuff in it that was disturbing and teaching kids about death and stuff like that and that the whole world's not perfect. And um, so I think more like in the 80s and into the 90s, like a lot of kids' movies were pretty dark. I mean, even if you think of like Beetlejuice or like Dark Crystal or uh, Labyrinth or a lot of those movies, like they had some pretty dark stuff in it. And I don't think this movie is any exception. I don't really watch a lot of modern kids' movies, like live action ones. I, I do watch like the Pixar ones, but even, you know, like the other day I watched Incredibles Part 2. That movie's actually pretty dark if you really start to break it down. There's a lot of pretty um, serious stuff in that for kids, but um, 
I don't know, back in these days, it just seemed like there was, like, disturbing stuff in kids' movies, and people just didn't really think too much of it. Maybe that's why we're all so messed up. I don't know, but... Um, I, my thoughts on this film, I, I enjoyed this movie. I can't say I would, it's probably going to be like one that I go back to a lot. Um, but every, maybe once in a while. Um, I thought it was cute. I mean, look at Fred Savage in that, look at Fred Savage. How could you even resist Fred Savage's little cute face? And I thought that Howie Mandel was kind of a hilarious, or I definitely laughed out loud a bunch of times watching this movie. Um, the underworld sets were really cool. Um, just very creepy vibes. Uh, the whole story about, you know, so many kids movies, you know, the, the creature under the bed is actually terrifying or whatever. Um, you know, the only ex exception I guess I could think of would be like Monsters, Inc. Or something like that where like the creatures under your bed or in your closet are actually uh, quite funny. But, um, you know, we all, we all know that, you know, kids are scared of what's under their bed or whatever. This kind of turns it on its head and I think for the time um I don't know if there was a lot of movies before this that did that but uh it did kind of make light of it a bit and maybe that was good for kids uh I like I said I didn't watch this when it came out because I I was 20 when that came out so I was not into watching a lot of kids movies so um I did find this VHS a couple weeks ago at Value Village and I picked it up just cuz I was like, "Oh, I've never seen it and it's kind of cool to have it on VHS. The cover art's cool." Um so I did pick it up and and like just watch it and uh I enjoyed it for what it was. It's uh yeah, if you like Beetlejuice, you'll probably actually like this. I would say Beetlejuice is the stronger of the two movies, but um definitely in that kind of Tim Burton-y kind of uh Tim Burton adjacent, if you will. But yeah, the acting's great. Fred Savage is so lovable. Um, Howie Mandel's, yeah, a little obnoxious, but like I said earlier, I think that's what his character was supposed to be. So if that is, in, in fact, the case, uh, he did great because he was definitely obnoxious in this movie and over the top, and um, but but still quite funny. Still quite funny. The makeup, too, on um, Howie Mandel was cool. The makeup on the uh, Netherworld people was really neat. Um just a fun, just a fun kind of dark uh, kids movie, and but not like really, really dark. I mean, it had like quite a bit of humor and stuff in it. But, so I would say if you like Beetlejuice or Tim Burton and stuff like that, you'll probably like Little Monsters. Um, I thought it was cute, pretty harmless. Probably not going to watch it again, or if I do, probably not very often. But I'm glad I finally got to see it. Uh, this edition, of course, is the VHS, so there's really not much to talk about. Uh, the cover art is pretty cool. Uh, this is has a runtime of one hour 43 minutes that was another thing I thought maybe they could have uh, scraped about 15 minutes off um, it did run a little long uh, this is a color film from 1989 I did say 90 earlier I think but uh, or no the VHS came out in 90 the film came out in 89 from United Artists and MGM um, this is rated PG in Canada so uh, you can little kids can watch it with their parents the LA Times said a special effects extravaganza. Uh, here's a look at the tape. Nothing too fancy about it. Pretty basic. But yeah, it was cool to finally get this and uh, watch it. I'll probably look around for this on DVD eventually and upgrade and uh, give pass this along to somebody who loves uh, VHS. But um, yeah, that's my thoughts on this film. You can currently watch this for free on the Plex app if you have a smart TV, or you can rent it on Google Play, Apple TV, YouTube, or Amazon Prime. I think you can find this tape around for... I've seen this tape before uh, and passed on it. This was, of course, I did eventually uh, recently grab a hold of this one, but um, I don't think this one's very uncommon. I think this was a pretty big movie uh, in the rental market when it came out on VHS, so... Uh, but like I said, I will upgrade the DVD when I find it. Um, let me know your thoughts on Little Monsters. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Uh, leave your comments below. Consider giving me the thumbs up if you like this review or this type of content. Uh, I do a cult movie Tuesday every Tuesday, and I do a Fright Friday, which is my horror movie review every Friday. And in between, I do have some uh, thrifting videos as well. This coming Friday, I'm reviewing The Night Flyer on uh, my Fright Friday series, so be sure to watch for that. 
and uh, like a, I will definitely be having a thrifting haul coming soon. I did pick up some stuff recently. I'm just waiting to add a few more titles just to kind of beef it up a little bit so it's a more of a substantial thrifting haul video but that will be coming uh, next week. I have uh, Nobody on uh, actually next week's a, kind of a cool not a big deal but um, I haven't thought of a cool title for it yet so I'm just going with mainstream Mondays but on Mondays, I'm going to be talking about your more mainstream movies, blockbusters, popular movies. Uh, next week on Monday, I'm going to be talking about the movie Nobody uh, with Bob Odenkirk. Uh, uh, next Tuesday, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. And way next Friday, uh, Jeff Fahey and Body Parts. So uh, next week is a pretty stacked um, pretty stacked lineup as well. So be sure to watch for those next week. Um, and like I said, I'll be back on fr this coming Friday with... Uh, Stephen King's The Night Flyer, so be sure to tune in for that. Uh, th again, thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody who has subscribed recently. I appreciate your support. And until next time, I will see you at the video store or at the thrift store or just out and about somewhere. But until next time, hopefully I will not be in some nether world with Howie Mandel. But until next time, take good care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.